and found several that were in our size category with the, that are comparable in socioeconomic standing. So for example, Clyde, Ohio, a population of 6,300, has a median family income of $45,000. Cary, Ohio, population 3,500, has a median income of 41,000 for family. Brewster, Ohio, with a uh, population of 2,100, and a median income of 42,000. So, you know, it, you don't have to, a city doesn't have to be wealthy in order to allocate money for trees. Um, I looked up the median income for a family in Mount Healthy, and it's about 42,000. So I feel like we can do it if we want. We, we could network and find solutions as to how we can, you know, uh, help fund uh, an even better tree program than we have right now. Um, so I guess that's really all I wanted to bring up right now and then just to leave it with you to decide if it could be something you'd like to include, you know, at five minutes to 10 minutes of uh, focus on some aspect about, about trees or how we care for the trees here in, in, in Mount Healthy. So I don't know if you want to answer that now or think about it and, and let me know. And uh, if you have any questions now, I'd be glad to answer them. Is there a place, uh, what website did you get that off of? Is it? The uh, Arbor Day Foundation is, it keeps a list of all the tree cities. Is okay. that? No, well, not only the tree cities, but the requirements to be a certified tree city. It is actually a program that's sort of sponsored by the Arbor Day Foundation and then in the state of Ohio, the ODNR, the okay. Division of Natural Resources, kind of administers it okay. through their urban forestry program. So. Okay, so I can look it up on ODNR, what all the qualifications are to become a tree city. Right. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. Do you have a lot of deer problems eating your young trees that you plant around the city? Uh, you might see fencing around some of the trees, and, and that's because, I don't know if it's eating. Yeah, there's two trees on this street here, uh, right by the cemetery, that the deer have been eating the leaves. So. Um, before this year, it's been mostly the deer like rubbing their antlers, so I've kept some fencing around the, the trunks for a while. Oh, they, they love my fruit trees. Yeah. And I, and, uh, I bought a basswood from you a couple years ago. Did that get they, eaten? They, they eat it all. I, I got wire around it and everything else. They still get in there, push it around till they can chew off the leaves. So yeah, I guess the trick is to protect the tree till it gets big enough that they can't. Yeah, but I, I'm having trouble protecting yeah. them enough. Yeah, I could. I'd be glad to come look at it and see if I can help you figure out how to how to protect it. We'll just put more wire around. It's frustrating, it. <laughs> and you're in a place where there's a lot of woods, so you have a lot yeah, of deer. There's a lot of deer. Yeah. I wish I ate black walnuts off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. And honeysuckle, right? Too. I have yes. um, just one a one page handout for each of you. Just ideas to think about, and I can share something. Oh, okay, great. All right, there might be more. There's <laughs> post a note here, so you, I didn't know if you wanted oh, that. Thank you. Mr. Parsons has a question. Yes, sir. Do you have an idea how much you expect to spend each year approximately? Yeah, um, I've made a kind of a budget every year, and, and uh, it really runs in the like $2,000 range or something like that because we do things really economically. Do you provide that budget to Mr. Coker for the budget? I actually, I haven't been, but that's something I could do. Yeah, so. well, I think we do put we do put money in there, but mm -hmm. uh, if, if we had a better idea of, of what you'd need and we could uh, budget better. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. <coughs> thank you. All right, thank you for your time. Yeah, Karen, are you aware of the big push to plant trees alongside the interstates down in Louisville? No. They're spending millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, they firm, firmly believe that the trees buffering the pollution and the noise can prevent a lot of heart problems to the residents living near the highways. That's a really and good thing to add to the list of benefits. Yeah. yeah. Well, they don't, they're still trying to prove it. Okay. But they, uh, they, they have enough uh, belief in their ideas <coughs> and the people behind it pushing it. I think they've spent over $21 million planting trees. So that's kind of in place of the walls that were put up around Well, here. yeah, it's, it pretty much hides the walls. The walls are still there, but yeah. they're, they're filling them in with Wow. A lot of evergreens and deciduous trees also. So. Yeah, yeah, wow. Well, I know that um, the trees are being seen as like a primary tool for combating climate change now, so it may be that it's doing double duty for you know safety yeah. for drivers as well as other things. All right, well, thanks. All right, thank you.
Okay, who else did we have? Uh, Chief? Chief, yes. And while while the chief's walking up, I can I can get started. Um, I asked him to to come tonight because we've talked about this back in March. I think it was when we when we di did the objections to the to the renewals on the um, liquor license of the three businesses, and kind of said, hey, let's 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 just not forget about this. Let's talk about it in six months, and here we are. And um, um, and I'll let him interject. I'll, I'll just I'll just kind of give you my. Uh, take on things to this point and I included on on your desk uh, an email um, uh, from that the chief was able to get from the liquor board um, um, but since that meeting um, there's really been very little that's happened uh, one one thing that happened was was reminisce after that that is something that didn't need to come before council was a request to change ownership which since we objected for the renewal we also just objected to the change in ownership um, and we recently got a notice from them we think about the objection of the of the uh, owner transfer uh, that they requested, not the objection of the renewal, but they haven't responded back to us. Um, so that that's one piece. And since then, we you know we 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 I reached out to the business association. Um, I asked them to kind of work as a liaison. They reached out to some of the businesses, and nobody wanted to meet. Um, we met in August uh, uh, at the request of. Uh, two of the owners at, at, at Vince's um, and quite frankly had a very unproductive meeting. It was a meeting about them being upset about us objecting um, of all the reasons why we shouldn't object it, um, of all the things that we have been rehashed before and the chief and I tried to continue to tell them look. Uh, and one of their big things and that's why we got that email was it, we can't do anything about this. It's already in the hand of the hands of the, of the liquor board and we can't we can't request it to withdraw this or not and that email dispels that clearly I mean we can do it any time up to they are about ready to render a decision which would be even probably after a hearing so there is things but what we've asked them to do is to show us what are they doing what you know we, we, we shared with them we feel like there's over serving that goes on I think it was discussed that night what are some of the things that you're trying to do to improve so that we can administratively come back to council and say hey you know what they've done all this stuff and it looks good and here's we think we should withdraw this we've got nothing we've got nothing um, so that's where we're at you know we asked you to come you know we said we would come back um, um, and and here we are I'm still hopeful that they'll that they'll come back knock on wood since they've kind of been put on notice and that's kind of what we said this was is hey putting you on notice get your get things straightened up show us a plan and we can we can we can withdraw these things uh, we haven't heard that but luckily not, not surprisingly, things have been fairly quiet. Right, Chief, and I'll turn it over to you. Yes, uh, I've been including uh, the actual runs uh, that we make at the various liquor establishments in your monthly reports. Uh, overall, uh, I mean, they still continue to go on. We expect some. Uh, nobody expects perfection, perfection by any stretch of the imagination. But, um, you know, my concern with Reminisce was the ownership change. In my experience, what that does is it kind of wipes out the ability for us to try to resolve some of the, the pending issues, the locking officers out, um, some of the issues with the uh, management of the, of the place being um, less than cordial when we come in to try to do inspections and different things. Um, and so we objected to that with the idea that not so much that we care who owns the place um, as much as we do care about the fact that whoever takes it up at least gives us some commitment to address the issues that we've had with large crowds and the locking of the officers out and, and the various things that have been outlined in that, in that particular report. Uh, as Mr. Coker said, Vince's was not very uh, productive in my estimation at all. It was basically a rehash of, you know, why, why are we picking on them, which I, I'm trying not to pick on anybody. As a matter of fact, this is a select yourself in process. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, it's not my position to try to run anybody's business. There's a whole litany of rules that they're supposed to follow and know. Um, and basically, we tried to recommend that back to them. Vince's has the distinction of having, uh, you know, two deaths occurring inside of the facility itself, uh, along with uh, quite a bit of intoxication issue, drug sales, especially after 9 o'clock, uh, those types of things that are occurring inside that we think 
could be managed quite a bit better. Um, and as far as take a shot, obviously we've had homicides there as well, on the outside, not on the inside. Uh, and we continue to have some problems there with crowds gathering and issues of um, lewd behavior occurring inside with strippers and different things that, uh, that we've tried to have uh, addressed. And so some of those things still continue. Ohio Liquor uh, Commission is working with us. We're working very closely with them. We're asking them, and they're our primary response in. We don't have an investigative unit to do it ourselves, so we have to rely on uh, other agencies to do it, the state being the primary source. And when you rely on somebody else, you got to kind of get on their schedule, and when they have time, they come down. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, really not a whole lot of change. I'll continue to uh, put those uh, runs on the reports so you can all see them. Um, based on my conversation, as Mr. Coker said, in my experience with the Ohio Liquor Commission, uh, we've probably got at least another six months to a year before we even get a hearing. Um, my hope is that somewhere between now and then we, we manage to get this under control and get them to cooperate. We want to have viable businesses. Certainly uh, liquor establishments are part of that vibrance that make make a city great um, but we just can't have them run a rough shot over the law and that's kind of where we're at right yeah I mean I, I've received some questions about you know we're hearing you're trying to close Vince's down we're not trying to close no. Vince's down we're trying to get them to show us a plan it's simple and if anybody says this to you no we just need a plan of what you're good what you're trying to do to address some of these issues present them to us meet with us they've never met with us in a productive way of it was, you know, has there been anything else going on? What can we do? It's always, why are you doing this to us? You're just trying to close this down. You're picking on us, yada, yada. So we're hoping that we can get some from them so we can come back to you guys six months and say, hey, yeah, we've got some, they've, they've worked with us, they've met with the police, they've set up some different things. We can see what they're doing is, is working and let's, let's withdraw this thing. It's as simple as that, you know, but yeah. anyway, so. Yeah, I called Bill today because I had a resident trying to get a hold of me to talk about the fact that I, and the rest of council are close is closing Vince's down, and it's all. It must be a. It's it, it's coming from Vince's, I guess, because I'm hearing more and more of this. Oh, they said, and I said no, and so I called Bill to get more information. So I'm glad you're here tonight because. I know that one resident wants to meet with me, and that's fine, and I'll be able to say, you know, I. I'd be happy to meet with whoever the resident is. Well. Uh, if they feel comfortable or if you feel comfortable. No, I feel comfortable talking I, I, to you. I can, I can assure you that we've got a lot of, lot better stuff to do. Oh, I know. And we've been extremely busy. I know. I know. Um, and it's been very difficult to manage all this stuff. But I, I do have a, a, a commitment from the standpoint of fundamental fairness. Sure. And, you know, uh, just because an establishment has longevity doesn't mean that it, it gets to do whatever it wants to do. Right. And, and well, that's and, really what it comes down to. And I talked to Kim Cremens, who's president of the Business Association, yeah. and she tried to set up a committee. She tried to work with him, and she's got the same uh, res response, and she's been kind of disappointed because she was hoping to be a part of uh, some kind of a productive way of, of resolving this, and she's been closed off too. So it's very disappointing. Thanks, Chief. I, you know what? We'll, we'll come back in six months <laughs> and give you another update. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Oh, sorry. When we talked about this in March, you had three bars and you had 20, 30, 50 incidents over the last so many months. Uh -huh. Your report here today has a handful in the month of September, but are you still getting 10, 20, 30 a month from each of these bars? Or are you, we is, we never it, got 10, uh, we never, to my knowledge, we've never gotten 10, 20, or 30 in a month. Okay. So what, what we gave you was a run from, uh, it works based on when the liquor objections have to be filed with Columbus and the, the business period therein, which is, is generally March. Um, we had a little bit of a law because of the COVID and they shut a lot of things down during COVID. We had, uh, at that time, we had reminisce, um, was particularly problematic and take a shot were particularly problematic with uh, violent kind of encounters. Um, and so we were going to file those, but we were prohibited from doing so because the Liquor Commission went into hiatus during the COVID uh, issues. And then with very little notice, we got contacted by the Ohio 
Department of Liquor Control saying if you guys have any, when I say you guys, if a municipality has any complaints that they want to bring forward, bring those forward and gave us basically about three or four weeks to do that in. If we didn't present at the time we did, we wouldn't be able to use any of that background information. Right. And so by filing, all we did was ensure that we can use those incidents in any kind of future uh, hearing that occurs in Columbus. If we don't bring those forward every year, then it's considered resolved and the Liquor Commission has a lot better stuff to do than go back and rehash old stuff so they cut it off very quickly. And I just remind you, the Liquor Commission's not in the uh, business of taking licenses or in the business of issuing licenses. And so, uh, you know, th they're looking at it from that perspective as well. So if they don't hear from you within the time limit, then everything that happened or that you have on file just gets deep sixed and you start over again. And we didn't want to lose some of the egregious, in my estimation, egregious violations that we had, had seen in some of the, especially the blocking of officers from entering the premises were, oh, we have those on film. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not a subjective thing, it's, it, it's there. Are you still having one or two a week at, at some well, most of we'll generally, you know, what you're seeing is generally within that 30 day period. So we're, we're averaging about five or six okay. during, during the month. And that's different, different locations. Different, yeah. yeah. And you had quite a few here for yeah. just one more and they, they weren't one of the bars that we, yeah, rejected. just one more. That was the first, that was the first group of uh, incidents that we saw at just one more uh, in probably five or six months at least. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Question. Yes, ma'am. Pit the plate is gone. The new place is opening. They're going to have a liquor license. If they are, I'm not aware of it. I know that they, they are uh, they, in the process of a sports bar, yeah, it was and they would have to transfer that sports, uh, the sports, the license from pit to plate to the bar. But before they're allowed to do that, they should be coming to us saying, hey, there's a transfer request, and if you have any objections, you can file them. You, you all get to make that, that call. Have we received that kind of? Not that I'm aware of. That would come from the liquor board. Everything at the liquor board is backed up. So I know that they're, they're even having problems with uh, getting all the renewals in. And right. that's, so, that's one of so the they issues. they can open, but they wouldn't be able to have their liquor license? I mean, it's a food place, a grill, and a bar? I think what they might do to remedy some of those things is, is offer temporary licensing for a specific period of time to give them a chance, the liquor board a chance to catch up and not stop a business from from opening up, but um, I, I I could check. I could try to check. Let me well, put it that way because it's. Uh, I mean, I've had. It's not been easy just even getting somebody answer the phone up there. I, I just I've had questions, and so they were kind of the things that I've been asked. And yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Pit, Pit to Plate did have a liquor license there, so if they sold the, a lot of times when it's sold like that, it it's the business and the, the everything in there along with the liquor license, but. To the point, it, we'll have to we'll get a notice of that at some point when that is, when that close is close to uh, being finalized. Tra yeah, yeah, transferring ownership. <laughs> Anything else for the chief? Oh, Jenny. Um, the event centers. Oh, we're going to. I'm going to cover that in my report. Okay, yeah. so we'll cover that. Yeah, okay. Cover yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. One other question, digressing from that, um, from the uh, the bar issues, um, the test. Is going to be held October 21st. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to cover that too? I, I was just wondering the number of people that were Four. going to sit. Four. Okay. Not yep. as many as used to be, but. Nope. Three of the four have yeah. affiliation with the city. There were two cadets um, that, that we started off with and worked with, and they've finished their OPATA certification. Uh, and then a part timer that's been with us, and then a, a, a new applicant. Sadly, that's all we got. I mean, you know, you were you were indicating in your report. I mean, they're they're canceling, yeah, canceling classes because nobody's there. So. We have we have a, a looming uh, issue there. Uh, the uh, Ohio Attorney General's conference concluded today, and um, it was about a two-hour presentation roundtable on recruiting issues. And you know, you talk about supply chains being broken. Um, there was a state law that required 10 applicants in order to have an academy class anywhere in the state and 
they were canceling academy classes because they couldn't get, get to the 10. So they lowered it. They lowered the number that were needed in order to start the academy with the hopes of, of fixing that problem, and they, they still can't get the numbers that they need. So, you know, we've always kind of relied on being able to reach out and grab some fresh recruits and, and, and get them going. But there are no fresh recruits to get going. And uh, part of the conversation was police agencies are starting to cannibalize each other. And, you know, the larger agencies, um, I know Cincinnati's got three academy classes scheduled for this year. Um, and they'll be pulling from all over the county just looking for, for officers. Um, and there's all kinds of incentives to take tests. And, uh, you know, uh, Phoenix is actually flying officers into Cincinnati to give tests here to see if there's any applicants. And that there's a $10,000 bonus for, for those that um, – you know, pass and, and go on to the to their academy. So we got rough sailing for the next couple of years. There's no question about that. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Sorry, one other comment. Chief, thanks for the the uh, the document you put together every month. It's very certainly helps let us know what's going on. So I appreciate that too. So okay. thank you again. Sure. Thank you. Thank Good you, Chief. Chief. Thanks, Chief. Okay. So that covers our guests and special events. Move on to public input. Is there anybody here who would like to address council? What's that? If you want to address council, you gotta come up to the podium. Don't worry, we, we won't throw things. Or <laughs> you get to be on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Do, um, we need your address and, and your name and address. My address, uh, Kim Frederick. 1513 Adams Road, of course you knew the rest. Okay, Kim. Okay, I haven't been to a meeting for quite a while um, because um, my, my issues, and I know they seem small, uh, have been ongoing on Adams Road. Um, there's a few things to um, off the record, like kind of, uh, the curbs they put in recently are pretty shallow, and I don't know if that was for Rumpke's benefit to get the garbage cans down or what it was for, but so th there's people just now, just since we got all this nice stuff done, that are just literally driving off the road and doing lawn jobs and stuff. So um, I ended up calling the police department on it a couple of Fridays ago because I caught one of them, and I do have their license plate number here. And they basically tried to hide from me behind the four family across the street and yell out. Um, and, and that ended up being pretty uh, not very nice between me and the officer. So uh, because when I make a call, I don't feel safe to do so, okay? Because it's either gonna be sort of like downgraded, oh, it's not so bad, or you know, we can't really help you, or do you have camera footage? Um, I still have the, so I did catch them, um, and the guy's kind of like, you know, yelling from behind the house, and oh yeah, I'm gonna fix it. Oh yeah, right, you are, I'm sure you are, whoever you are back there, you know. And so when I called 911, he sort of gotten kind of uh, irritated with me, because I wasn't just going by his good word, you know, after I just caught him doing what he did, and then trying to hide his vehicle. So he, um, he went on to tell me, well, it's really muddy, and I'm like, well, what are you doing in the mud? Why is your car not in the street, you know? And so then he went on to say, well, it's city property, you know? So I was kind of irritated. So when the police officer showed up, you know, of course, I didn't use the best language of all, but I didn't use the full language. And I said, this guy's over here doing this. And so then the police officer sort of screams in my face, you know, that it's city property. So when I Okay, so I'm going to go through the, count, uh, the guys that are doing the construction work. I'd rather go through you guys and see if you can possibly fix the whole front length of my house because I got the worst lawn job of anybody out there. And I just don't want a mud pit in front of my house. But over the years, I have been subjected to time and time again of property damage from my surrounding neighbors who I would think would have the decency to be looking out for each other, you know? But they don't, you know, if my tree falls and bangs on your shed and if it breaks down this fence on this side and this side, and I got BB gun holes in my house and, you know, and I've got firecrackers, big, huge ones shot at cars and at my house and I got a crack in my siding and I 
come home and there's black streaks. I literally have to walk outside of my house checking for nails in the driveway and every other thing that could happen next. You know, it's really unsettling. So, you know, my cameras are not going to pick up things, projectiles coming from dark corners and dark areas and things like this. So I can't hardly catch them, but I'm constantly on my toes. Now, the other thing is, is I started keeping a log book of, and this is just since June. I had a former one. It's sort of like you throw it up in the air. I get tired. There's not enough time in a day to go over the type of things just from my nearby neighbors. And I've been threatened three times now, okay? One sort of off the cuff. I'm sitting on my porch. I had my son put a blind up just so I can have some privacy and decency in my home so that I can even sit on my porch. I have to put covers on it. I have my porch stuff chained to my porch so it's not taken off with, you know what I mean? It's like being a prisoner in your own home. So I'm sitting on my porch, I'm like kind of behind a tree, I'm kind of, oh, it's nice to sit on my nice porch. And I hear this guy like, hey, beautiful, you know, that's harassment. And it's literally borderline stalking what these people have been doing. So I've had, I've had 15 police reports. Honestly, I should put you guys on speed dial. I mean, and in and, and, and every one of them, there's things that go on. Like I told Bill, the last time I had complained about the constant barrage of furniture, appliances, and things that are going out in the yard. And it's to the point, like all last winter, there's garbage lined up the whole property line. And I think it's done as a harassment to me on top of dragging their garbage cans all the way down to m my side from their side where they should go right down. It's got to come. I mean, this they're dedicated to harassment. So that being said, when I had called Bill about a, an appliance, being the eighth refrigerator being thrown out in their yard, left for months and months and months and months on top of mattresses, box springs, d multiple furniture sets, three toddler beds, double sinks. The house doesn't even accommodate a double sink. I've been in that house, it's identical to mine. Where is this coming from? You know, they're dragging this stuff over. And so anyways, now, right now, they have like a mattress on their front porch. They have a couch leaning against the left side, which I didn't even know until a slow moving vehicle was gawking at it. It's been there for a year. I mean, what, I have to document how long, eight months on a refrigerator in the backyard. But I, call, I had called Bill about it back at the end of January, and so let it go. Well, I don't know, I'm pretty sure Bill probably gave them a notice, and what I got was a couple of really hard hits to my car and my house with everything from their refrigerator, children's blocks. This isn't a random attack from somebody's not loading up their car with, you know, ranch bottles, pickle jars, tuna cans, filled water bottles with filled pop bottles, glass Coke bottles up my walk. This is, the, uh, this is just an attack that is very unnerving. And it happened two weekends in a row. So this is what I get if I say, hey, you know, please do something about this. And uh, on top of that, they'll allow their young child to play amongst this filth in their yard. You know, and that's not right by any means. So uh, I, they did pick up the filthy garbage part of it, not all the other stuff, but they did that because I contacted the landlord, which is probably the 90th message he ignores, um, and I said, you should be ashamed of yourself. People should be ashamed. You let a little girl play in this stuff, you know what I mean? It takes that, I mean, you wanna be so, such ruthless neighbors that you would let your own child play in this. You know, and, and so I noticed that the garbage got picked up after that. But I ran into Regina Stinger two doors down, who doesn't say boo to anybody, keeps to herself, you barely see her. And um, she let me know, and I don't know what she said, uh, that she had also wrote the uh, landlord, Brandon Schneider, about something that she was in concern with. She hasn't been in favor of what's been going on either, but she's kept silent. Uh, the people across the street complained to me that they had to pick up even the pipe of their fireworks. I pick them up every year in my yard. They're, they shoot them off all over our, our stuff. They shoot them into the traffic the year before last. I mean, it's just inconsiderate stuff, you know? And um, it, it'd be nice to be able to complain and then have the police. The one time they did go over and told both the Carter residents, 1505, and the Dixon, that they have no trespass order to my house, you know? 
because of the threat from the Carter boy. I, I can maybe help here a little bit. Um, th when she's saying Bill, it's Bill Knight. Uh, we're, we, I don't right. think we've talked in a while. I know Craig. we have talked right. before. I think it was Bill Knight, yeah, yeah. And I, I know you talk, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You talk a lot to, to Ray mm -hmm. and Alex. I think you're now on first yeah, name basis, yeah. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I do know that there is a, an active citation and there, the stuff on the porch, it, if not removed this week, will be removed by the city. And, that, and, and I do know that's there. And I'll there. probably be able to file it in well, Ray's fault. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get a response. Yeah. I'm going to figure out the document. Okay. So this is, this is what, what I have been coming across with this particular family, and they've kind of gone on into the Carter household, which implementing their ways mm -hmm. is to throw a bunch of garbage and break things and whatever and stay out of my camera line. So that's, the, you know, it kind of leaves me in a rough spot. I live alone. I, I have had to pay ADT. I've had to put cameras up that aren't quite enough. I've got another one waiting to go up. I've got a fake camera I put up in the backyard just to, Hopefully they think, you know, I'm putting up motion sensor lights and, you know, but it's affected my work. And so when we did the work on the streets and I was asked to move my car around the corner, I had to take off three days because literally I can't feel safe to put my car around the corner like everybody else because what they'll do to me with cameras on my house, you know, I can guarantee you they'll go around the corner. You know what I mean? And it's not fair to me, you know what I mean? And then, then the, the, in the same week I lose money in there, then I'm woke up in the middle of the night I, when I had a very I, I busy sympathize with you, ma'am. I, I, I'm right here. I'm right here. Oh, okay. I sympathize with you. I think we have a time limit here, don't yeah, we, Mr. Yeah, Bittner? Yes. Uh, and, and we got the message. And, and you've been here before, and, we've, and, and we're, we're, not, we're not, I'm not taking it, I mean, I'm taking it seriously, but I think we need to pinpoint exactly what the issue is. And I think you've given us a lot of information and Bill Knight's working on it. So I would say thank you so much for coming up. No problem. No thank problem. you. <laughs> okay. Is there anybody else who would like to address council? Okay. Going to move on to committee reports. Business Partnership and Alliance Beautification, Jenny Moody. Yes. Um, I was not able to go to the business uh, association meeting um, because of the funeral. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, I did get their minutes. and. Um, John Putnam from Cincinnati Bell um, came and talked about the progress, and I've talked to Bill about it. And so right now, um, they're working on uh, certain sections of the city, I think, that we've already been told about. I don't know if he'll give us any update on that. But he did give a presentation. It was only a 10-minute presentation, just to let the Business Association know uh, what was happening. Um, also, they talked about Christmas in Mount Healthy, which will be December 11th from 4 to 7. There's a small committee working on that, and the Business Association is uh, sp helping sponsor that. Uh, people, f uh, Personnel from the school district was there. The Early Learning Center is having a grand opening on October 25th. Um, they also, the Business Association is having a membership uh, drive right now uh, to collect dues for membership. And um, they're hoping that um, more businesses will become and will become members and participate. Uh, the alliance. I did uh, reach out to um, the executive director of the alliance. I know the last time he wanted to know who the contact was at Colovena or Compton Apartments, and um, I'm sorry, Colovena Apartments. And I don't know if we have a contact. Um, right. I, I mean, I can. I mean, I, I, can, I told Rob I'd try I to get back with him. I mean, if he gets a hold of me, I can. I can okay, I've got I'll a let him know. Of emails, because I, I, you know, I, I actually uh, go ahead. I'll let you finish your report. No, no, that that was just it. So we'll we'll make sure we get that contact, I guess, to Rob and see if he can work for there. It, it seems like um, this is brought up at the business assess, or the uh, this is an alliance report, but it seems like it should weave into maybe we thrive too. Um, and I'm not sure whether Rob or anybody from the Alliance joins the We Thrive meetings. They're invited. I, okay, well maybe I would encourage him also to uh, be part of that too. Okay, um, that's it for Business Partnership and Alliance. Uh, beautification, uh, as you probably all realize with uh, plants in your own yard that uh, frost will be coming and um, they're looking a little peak at the ones we've got out. So at some point, um, the pots will be brought in uh, until next spring, but we will be having, I talked to Bill and the city's gonna sponsor um, the Get Trashed 
uh, organiz uh, group um, has not really done anything really formally. They used to be picking up every Sunday morning, but I know a lot of the people are trying to still uh, keep our city clean. On November 14th, that'll be a Sunday at 9.30, um, we can start meeting at the coffee shop. The city will pay for a coffee drink from Square Mile, and we will be having uh, donuts there from uh, the bakery again. Um, bring um, a picker-upper or have you know, gloves, and uh, we'll provide trash bags. Um, try to bring a bucket. If not, I know Square Mile has a few. And we'll be um, going throughout the city um, picking up trash. Again, uh, it used to be a formal thing we did every Sunday. It's kind of not been a formal um, event, uh, but we are going to have something on November 14th. So if anybody has um, an administrative um, license or not license but they're an administrator of a small uh, Mount Healthy group we need to spread the word um, and it'll go out through get trashed and I know Betty will probably put it on a couple more group sites in Mount Healthy so November 14th we'll be picking up trash meet at the coffee shop around 930 the trash pickup will start at 10 o'clock and that's it thank you Jenny okay uh, finance Mr. Parsons I reviewed the September statements that we got and uh, had a couple of questions that were satisfactorily answered. And other than that, uh, I, uh, I think everything is going very well with the with the actual compared to budget. Super, thank you. Questions? Okay. Uh, Parks, Ms. Ms. Lingo, she's not here. Streets and safety, Mr. Redding. Uh, just one thing about parks first. Okay. Did everybody see that uh, note in their packet from Greg Cutter? Yes. About the uh, base uh, number one. I'm I'm assuming he's talking about the number one field. The only one we have left. Yep. Yes. Okay. So. Um, I was going to recover that. He's going to cover that. Oh, you're going to cover it. Okay. I'll let you cover that. Great. So on the streets, uh, just a quick update on Adams Road project. Uh, we do have new curbs in. I talked to Bill. Uh, earlier today because uh, I was interested in the curbs are I forget the term you use curb. rolled curbs uh, up to the west side of Perry okay um, and then from Perry to Adams there the block curb and and I didn't know why that was but Bill uh, clued me in on so it, if you look in a business district they're all blocked and so they just continued that around the bend uh, and then stopped it there at the west side of Perry. So now it makes sense. So thanks for that, Bill. Um, but so the curbs are done. Uh, the first layer of asphalt is is on Adams Road. Uh, That's just, I mean, Adams Road is just a gr grind and overlay. Right, but the first layer is on there. So no. the only layer, first and last. Uh, looks like there's about a half an inch short of the curb. That's why I said that maybe an inch. It's, it's about an so, inch okay. lower than the curb. Well, no, it, it, it'll come up to the gutter line. Yeah, so that's why I was saying the okay. first. So I think there's another layer going on. I'm not, so, um, and the same thing with Hickman. Sorry. Definitely Hickman, and, definitely Hickman and, and, and Elizabeth is, is, is not going to get the final coat on it this right, year. Right, it, right. It'll we'll wait and it'll settle. If there's any settle, we'll address it, and then the final coat will go on in the spring. Yeah. Final co uh, covering, yeah. So, yes, because on Adams, they just have the yellow spots going down the, where the double yellow line will be eventually when it's done. So, but I did notice that, that it to me, it looked like the first coat was on. Okay. Um, and then also on, on Adams Road, uh, looks like all the sidewalk repairs were, were finished or wrapping up, uh, obviously, except where they may, may be some work on Adams and Elizabeth there and the curb. And, uh, so back to Hickman, uh, the, the first layer's in. They've got some of the sidewalks in. They're putting uh, forms in for the other part of the sidewalks. And uh, the only other thing I wanted to note, I saw two, two uh, peep folks that live on Hickman out, and they had mentioned something about trash pickup. And I talked to Bill earlier, and, and that's going to be taken care of. So, um, so hopefully we'll see Rumpke down there uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and then finally on Elizabeth Street, uh, Jamie, we got your emails from uh, 
concerning the issue with the sidewalks and that seems to have been resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, I think talked to Ann tonight before council meeting and Bob was down there. He talked to Ann and, and I, it sounds like it's resolved in, in talking with her. It's so straightened out, I think. It's straight, yeah. <laughs> it's, the sidewalks are straightened out. Go ahead, so. Greg, go down right away. And <laughs> yep. address you as soon as I email him. So um, anyway, that's on track. And then uh, talked to Bill again today about uh, potential alley work in 2023. And um, I think I'll cover a little bit more of that under under uh, new news or uh, new business um, later tonight. So um, otherwise, that is all I have uh, on safety. Uh, I think the chief covered everything that's going on. So. Uh, th that is it for me. Questions for Mr. Redding? Cindy. Are we going to look at um, Perry and Thompson again to see if we need a four-way stop there or we, where are we going to have the technician come or measure the, do the metrics again to see? I believe where we, we can certainly do that. Can, I mean, that would be have to be probably a voice vote by council to spend those dollars for another traffic study. Um, I, I, again, I believe the engineers, when they, they came through and when we went back to lights, no lights, I think all that was done. Uh, again, it can certainly, I think we talked about this last month that we could certainly take another look at it. Um, the one thing that was discussed was uh, maybe a better line of sight when you're looking west on Compton Road, uh, looking west towards Compton Road when you're going crossing Compton Road from either side of Perry. So I think that that was an open issue. So I have not talked to anybody about that yet. Any other questions for Mr. Redding? Okay, moving on, uh, schools. Mr. George is not here. Anybody have anything on schools? Library is Miss Dosa, she's not here. Urban Tree is Denise, who striking out. We thrive, Cindy Sheets. Um, we did meet September the 28th, and uh, we've been meeting at Fibonacci's. Um, Toucan, Farm, Toucan Farm, they're doing um, art with children and yoga. Um, they are meeting, the food pantry is still three days a week. Um, there is some, they have a collaboration with um, T um, Talbot House to do some job training and that there would be an application and then there would be some stipend that would be available for that. We also talked about some of the members brought information that other cities um, have had uh, social workers um, hired part-time by cities, and it could be the city, it could be the fire department or the police department. And um, so We Thrive has reached out to the Healthcare Connection to see what kind of um, behavioral health they have. Very preliminary discussion. Everybody knows it's very you know, commitment from us. Um, and I think there's going to be a meeting tomorrow um, with the director, the CEO, and a couple of the other folks that are there just to see if there's anything that we all can work together on. But it's, it's very much a dream, no concrete things. That's it. Okay, thank you. Questions from Ms. Sheets? Okay, we're going to move on then to the mayor's report, Mr. James Wolf. Yeah, um, actually, Ms. Sheets deserves the credit for that meeting because she set it up, not the whole committee. So thank you for that. Okay, um, good. I, and I think that could be a great start. The healthcare connections already started a great relationship with the school district, and um, really setting up some transformational stuff there. So they could be an asset. I look forward to hearing what they could do. Um, a couple business things. I got. A lot of little things. I'm just going to go through kind of in order. So um, Taste of Caribbean opened up now, the Caribbean restaurant. I went Friday night, and they, um, it's a good and a bad thing, they went through what Fibonacci went through their opening weekend, 
Uh, I got there at 5.30, and they had sold out of most of their stuff, and they ended up having to close early. Um, they were packed. I couldn't believe how many people were there. And that was actually the second weekend. The food was delicious. I do recommend calling ahead because it, they're trying to f figure it out running a restaurant. This is their first time, but the food is absolutely delicious. So it's good to have them in town, and I'm sure they'll get the opening kinks worked out. I'm sure it's tough opening a business like that. And I mentioned Fibonacci, if you remember, their opening weekend, they sold out, and people were disappointed. So it's a good thing. It means people want their food. So I look forward to going up there again. I encourage everyone to. Um, then this, no, not this Friday, sorry. This Sunday, there's a lot going on. Revelation Baptist Church moved into the old Mount Healthy Christian Church, and they, I didn't realize who they were or their history until recently. They were in the West End originally, and they were the church that was all in the news because they were displaced by the FC Cincinnati Stadium. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that moved here, and they're gonna be celebrating their 100th anniversary. So they're having a big celebration this Sunday um, at 4 p.m. So I'm gonna go and I have a proclamation for them. Um, you're more than welcome to attend if you're interested. They have, they're another organization that's moved in and immediately hit the ground running forming relationships. Uh, they have a great relationship with the school district. They are renting out part of the facility to the school district for an alternative program. Uh, they continue to have the food pantry there. So they've kept the relationships even though they didn't have those ties. So they've, they've really made an impact right away. So I'm happy to, to go there on Sunday and welcome them to the community. Also on Sunday, there was supposed to be, in case anyone saw, there was supposed to be a grand open house for the Early Learning Center. That has been canceled. Um, the school district's been remote for two weeks and they're actually gonna open for school on Monday and there's just too much with moving all the equipment from the schools um, to facilitate that. So they are gonna have a celebration later and I'll let you know when it is. But Sunday's event is canceled. They are gonna open for school on Monday. Um, let me see, something else Sunday. Oh, Sunday, the um, Mount Healthy Haunted Hall is having their Lights Up Night, which is a very popular event that they have every year. They turn on the lights and the monsters take off their masks so that little kids can go through and trick or treat. It's $5 for kids. Uh, the adults are free to go through with them. It's only from six to seven, so you have to get there kind of early. It's usually a long line. And with them, um, I, just in case you're unaware, it's run by the Knights of Columbus and the Scouts. It's one of the few charity haunts that's still around. Most of them are for-profit these days. So all the money goes to those two organizations. Additionally, they offer a discount. Uh, if you bring a canned good, you get $2 off any night. On Sundays, if you bring two cans of soup, it has to be soup, you get half off. And all of that gets donated to the food pantry and they have collected over a thousand pounds so far this year. So it's pretty impressive what they're doing. So even if you don't like haunted houses, you can always go up when they're open and drop off canned goods or soup and it'll go to the pantry. And then the 29th, next Friday, uh, Trinity always has their, well, they've been having their vaccine clinics and COVID testing clinics up there on Fridays. They have now formed a new relationship with Hamilton County. They will also be hosting the 513 relief bus, which is kind of a one-stop station for social services. Um, on the, the first one will be next Friday from 11 to two. And people up there will be able to learn about and apply for the different social services that the county offers, including food assistance, Medicaid, rent and utility assistance, Workforce development, child support, child care, et cetera. So it's kind of a mobile one-stop shop. Typically, you'd have to go downtown or somewhere else to get those services. So it's nice they're coming here, and Trinity is um, providing the location for that. Then Halloween is the last meeting for Halloween. We are 6 to 8 again, right? That's well, well, typically that on the website. That, yeah, yeah, that was... North College Hill is five to seven now, and I had some questions. I, I've replied as far as I know, we're still doing six to eight, so I just wanted to bring that up tonight. Usually council I'm does a motion just affirming that, but I, I mean, we put it out there because we were getting the questions, but that's yeah. typically what we do. 
We can do Don't that. Don't move it to Saturday, but I've heard of other communities that create a lot of oh, yeah, heartache. Yeah, yeah. Goodness yeah. gracious. <laughs> we can do that at New Business, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. Just wanted to bring that up. Um, no. Typically, we do six to eight on Halloween, so yeah. we can talk about that later. People can't get home by 5 o'clock, get their children yeah. ready. Well, that's going to be on Sunday this Sunday. year. Yeah. Sunday. Sunday well, this year. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly, Fibonacci is hosting something new called a Brewery Bazaar. They've had a lot of requests from people to host um, like craft type stuff and um, things that people make and sell that are not food. And that was some of the feedback they had from the farmer's market, but they wanted to keep the farmer's market food or farmer's market related. So they're doing a bazaar on November 27th from 12 until 3. So we have a while until then, uh, but I thought I would just give everybody a heads up right now. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, Mayor. Any questions? I do have one more thing. I'm sorry. Okay. Cordell got married this weekend. Oh. So I don't know if he's on his honeymoon, but that might well, be why he's uh, not here. That okay. makes yeah. After we excused him, I remembered that. So he got married this past weekend. Okay, so great. That might be why he's not here. If not, I want to congratulate him. When yes. He comes yes. back. Super. Question for the mayor. Yep. Uh, Fibonacci, the bazaar, is that – it's going to be more like a craft show? Yeah. It's going to be advertised? Yep, they already have. They already have okay. stuff out there. So I just tell you from being at Mingus this weekend, yep. w wow. It, I mean, it was packed. Yeah. So uh, be prepared. <laughs> Unless the weather's bad or something, be prepared. So November 27th. And that is right after, Friday after Thanksgiving. Isn't it just small business day? Yeah. Or Saturday. 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 Yeah, but small business Saturday. They, You're right. I, That's a great time. And I also think last time we didn't, we said that there is another uh, farmer's market in November. Oh, okay. I'm I almost sure that. there is. I saw a, a poster the other day, and I think we said it, the last one was in October, but I think there's one in November. I said that incorrectly then. Thank well, you. I, you might want to check it, but I thought I checked. Huh? There is yeah. one November. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mayor, we all done? That's it. Okay. City Manager's Report, Mr. Coker. Thanks. Just a few items tonight. Um, one of the things on your desk um, was uh, pictures, a couple pictures of some things, um, just to kind of give you a little uh, – we're finding this stuff on, on social media. Um, and, and really what it is is a, it's an event center that kind of operates as an after-hours after bar. I mean, you can see by the photos and everything. Uh, been working with Scott. He's done a lot of research on this. There's not a lot out there on it, but he thinks he's got enough information. Uh, you know, and we always say this, and I know it's it's you know it's, it's, it's difficult at times, but we received a lot of uh, complaints from residents. That helps. I think you, that will be reflected in the legislation when we get it together. Um, but uh, getting uh, I've reached out to Kim, you know, because you know it, what it seems like to do is just prohibit business like that between, you know, when the bars close at 2.30 and 6 in the morning. That's really when this is going on. But, you know, there's other business. We want to make sure, you know, I know the bakery starts probably at 3 in the morning, so we just got to make sure everything's worded properly. You know, T's are, are uh, crossed, I's are dotted. So hopefully we'll have every something together for your consideration and hopeful passage at the next meeting to address this because it's becoming a a problem and obviously it's a it's a workaround they don't have a liquor license they you know some of the some of the things say BYOB some of them says uh, you know there's uh, <coughs> alcohol provided but it's it's simply a, a it's an after hours yeah. bar after yeah. you know uh, that goes to sometimes five in the morning which uh, we don't need so we'll hope to get that uh, in front of you next good meeting. yes question for Bill on this um, and I maybe we talked about this before but I don't remember was is there anything do they have to come up and get an occupancy permit before they do and, 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 and they come up and get an occupancy permit as a rental hall which is permitted use right I mean most rental halls you you know you uh, they you know they can have a wedding reception or things like that or baby showers or whatever so under the occupancy it's permitted but th aren't there limits in other communities? I thought a lot of times rental halls had to close down at midnight. Mm -hmm. Well, a, a community may, I mean, that may be, you know, that's, yeah. that's based on a, a local, 
local right. ordinance. Or ordinance, okay. Yeah. So that's what we have to get in place. We don't have that, you know. Right. And with the, you know, with all the bars up there, it there is business up until two thirty in the well. Bars, what is it? Two o'clock is Last when call. everybody out by two thirty. But but that that's bar business. This shouldn't be a bar. This is well, not a bar. Okay, but it's yeah. I mean, really, no, and I that and that's regulated by the state, right? Right. So that that's that's right. the problem. That but we, that's a bar. But I guess I guess it's hard. They don't yeah. have a liquor license. We don't have to align with the bar. No. Time hours. Right. Um, council can put whatever hours okay. are in there. I mean, those th those are things that we can we can uh, you know look at. Um, uh, so that the hours can be set. You know, um, however you guys see fit. I mean, my concern would be is that if we would align the um, closing as a bar, bars could be upset because they have a liquor license and they have to abide by certain rules. So why would an event center be able to have the same hours as a bar and be able to do whatever without any, without any uh, regulation? My, well, that's just my opinion. Right, no, I get opinion. it. I mean, I guess our complaints are mainly being driven by noise issues, right? I mean, um, you know, we've, we've, we've made the liquor board aware of, of this, you know, even though they don't have a license. So it's not so much, you know, I mean, although we think, you know, we have, I mean, you know, we have a rental hall over there, right? People can be YOB, you know, sure. th those kinds of things. But we, you know, we limit ourselves. We're just going to need to limit them. Yeah. And, and, and whatever council sees fit, um, you know, uh, could a wedding reception go to midnight or one? It could. I mean, what you know, but yeah, so um, whatever council sees is, is what would be a good good accommodation there. So, do places like the Legion just police themselves and say, "Hey, wedding receptions go to midnight or, right. or that, whatever"? Well, that would be effective of all of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Would. Yes. Right. So, assumption. Assumption. So I guess yeah, assumption. I guess they just mm -hmm. police themselves and say, "Hey, we're we're because I." We stop at midnight or whatever. So. Right, right. I mean, well, but if we put some, because we don't, oh, get, absolutely. Or if we yeah. put something in place, it would, would be a ripple effect. And, that, and so I reached out to Kim and said, hey, you know, today, once we, we, we got some feedback from Scott that he found some things, you know, hey, ask around. You know, we don't want to cut off our nose to spider, right, spider face right. if we come up with something like, oh, we didn't yep. think about that, right? So, so yeah, I mean, but yeah, the legions, the assumption, you know, um, and, and they may say be fine because we're out of here by midnight anyway. I, I don't know. But, yeah. You know, but yeah. That is. Cindy, you're a member of the Legion, right? Can you, I don't know how often they run out, but can you find out like how late? Sure. Because I, I can reach out to Assumption. Because mm -hmm. I know like night of the races, that does last till midnight. Yeah. When there's people there cleaning and. Yeah. I know that but they, they, you have to be a Legion member or yeah. a connection to a Legion person to rent the hall because they've had some problems in the past from what I hear right. so they kind of reined it in that way mm -hmm. okay yeah that'd be great if if you guys can have that and uh you know and we can we we'll put we'll plug something in or, or if you can get that information to me prior to you know to it is because that would be a good standard and but we can always modify it that night to, to get it to get everybody on the same page so but just wanted to kind of get you a kind of a, um, you know, notice that this is something that's coming and something that we probably want to act on it quickly. So, so it's been ongoing. It started and then that, that they left, it was quiet for a while, now it started back. So I, I guess my next question is, is so if this is a hall or, okay, or, or an event center, mm -hmm. then, I mean, I'm not going to say anything goes, but uh, I was concerned about the one picture and I was like, Okay, holy mackerel! Is this is this a private event center and only only by invitation? Where we're you know like a wedding or you know because what's what's going on up there? You know, so as far as yeah, as far as who's serving? <laughs> yeah, and I mean yeah, I mean it's a private event. They don't have to let us in. Okay, we don't know what's going on there a lot of times. Yeah, you know that's that's part of. The rights people have of privacy, you yep. know. I mean, yep. it's a business, and so we can't just barge in there. So we have to have a search warrant. So yeah, we don't always know. Yep. They're not inviting us either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think. The interesting <laughs> part to me is that that says every Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Or is it moving past the rental point? Yeah. Right. They're oper It seems they're operating as a business yeah, they're, if it's, it's right. every. I, I really hope that, that Scott will allow us to put some language in here that eventually goes to the owner yeah. because 
the business, mm -hmm. they're going to they're gonna dodge bullets, they're going to do this, they're going to switch business names or whatever. After a couple of these citations that they're operating after these hours, then we should start citing the owner. Yeah. And I hope they'll do that. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. It's um, we're good on that one. So um, d we're working on the budget, uh, get starting to get stuff back from the department heads, uh, hopefully get everything rolled up here at the end of the month and get it to finance, and we'll stay on schedule for passage by the end of the year. Um, so uh, with Karen in here, I know I, I sent that out just trying to get some feedback. I got a little bit of feedback of how you guys want to proceed. It's your meeting, so whatever you guys want to do, I just want to communicate it to Karen. Um, you know, it, I know, it, Bob, you can share. Your, I think your comment was a report. You know, I just want to let Karen know. Expect to do this quarterly. You know, um, um, we don't even really do that with department heads. You know, as needed, we bring people in, and that could be the same way. But however you want to do it, I'd like to just give her a direction. I guess we don't need to answer that tonight because we're just talking on a quarterly basis. But I, I mean, sometimes you forget about it, right? And in the quarters here, and what do we want to do? So I don't know if pe folks have any strong feelings one way or the other, or what, how you'd like to proceed with that. Anybody have an opinion? I mean, we're, we're Denise Lingo is down monthly with an urban tree report, mm -hmm. and she usually gets that from Karen. But I mean, I'm not going to be on council after December, so I don't right. couldn't give an opinion. So. I mean, the information she gives is always really good. Gives us good ideas. Yeah. So, so Denise's report doesn't qualify, I guess. So, what? I mean, I think Karen has just requested to come get on the agenda sure. and be up here on a quarterly basis to give you guys information. Yeah, that's fine. That sounds good. Oh, yeah. You want to put her on it on the on the agenda permanently? I mean, quarterly, semi-annually. Uh, if it covers everything she needs to cover, that's fine with me. One of those is fine. She doesn't need to be on here. You know, she, she certainly doesn't need to be here every month. She's not asking that. Right. right. She's not. She's asking, she's if, asking if a if permanent she can spot. Get a, a, a spot. You know, and again, yeah. we don't, I mean, she wants a piece on your, your agenda. Right. Quarterly. I would like to <clears throat> see or hear a report in about the first quarter of what's going to happen during the year and then maybe in the third quarter of what happened during the year. You know, what do you plan to do early in, early in the year and then you get to fall and you say, here's, we did everything we expected, we did more, we didn't do everything. Okay. Just two reports as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Unless okay. something special happens. Right. And maybe she can just submit that to us to be part of the packet yep. and then whether it's Sounds you know great. then it's not a set thing it's like all right Karen in the first quarter January February March we'd like council would like for you to present something to them put it in their packet and then you know come that night for questions comments or whatever and then a follow-up in the third quarter Is that what how about doing? second meeting end of quarter one I wouldn't set a okay you know because my concern is if you start putting people on the agenda you know you're opening up a door, you know, a precedent there. No, when we expect the report in our packets. Whenever sh she gets it done in the third quarter, was I was going to say to her. Okay, so that's fine too. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I mean that way. If she wanted to date certain, then we could say second meeting of the first quarter and second meeting of ending the the third quarter. So the last second meeting in September and the second meeting in March. <coughs> meeting no 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 not meeting a letter council in the packet meeting. It's a letter in the packet you not a meeting you want to run your council. I know I'm not I got I understand what you were saying that's why I was saying tell her the uh, if we can expect a letter the in a by the for the council meeting that way if we want to discuss it we at least have her letter in front of us then if we need her she could come to the next council meeting you don't have everybody here tonight, so maybe it needs to be okay. discussed. I don't know. I mean, because you've got three people out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they want to be a part, a part of the discussion. Yes. And Denise does the urban tree report, so right. Denise might have an input or be able to talk to Karen. And okay. I mean, I'm just saying. We could we could we can bring it up again next meeting. Okay. 
just got to remember it. <laughs> oh, we'll remember. All right, good. Because <laughs> I may not. <laughs> um, okay. Um, then the, just the last item um, is the letter from Greg. Um, you know, yeah. he's asked, has this come up before? Uh, you know, they review the cameras. They know exactly who's using it. I mean, sadly, it's not getting used. I mean, you know, sadly, the, the, the ball diamond is the, the backstops archaic. You know, we tried many years in a row to work with the Reds uh, Foundation to try to get a, a nice ball field put in there. And we, can never, we never got the support. Because I think mainly we couldn't show that there was going to be enough use for it. Um, I think great, you know, and so these guys are spending a great deal of time trying to keep the grass off, chemicals, you know, turning over the fields, really for not for non-use. And I mean, I think, I don't think we needed to, I guess what I'm looking for is direction as to saying, yes, it's probably time to move away. Our guys can, can remove the fencing, the, the concrete that's there. It needs to be regraded. I mean, there's, it's a slope from third base to first base. They could regrade some of that. They could do all that. We maybe have to rent a piece of equipment. We could do that. You know, we don't really need to, that, that as part of their, you know, duties for next year. And then we could think about. And I thought he gave a great example, and you see those a lot with the, the um, different types of stations that you could put as the walking track yeah. does get used quite a bit. Yeah. So I think it's. But yeah. I didn't want. I don't want to remove the ballpark because we've had this discussion before. So I don't, I don't know if any anybody has any comments. Would they plant it in grass and basically make it a soccer field or a football Just field? Just make it, yeah, a grass field for now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that they, they would regrade it, um, take out the curbing and the, you know, and the fence right. and all that. And just, yeah, get it a clean, open. we have a clean slate then to see what we want to do with it. I think a walk, you know, the walking area, people use it. I mean, they no use, doubt. and they use the park next to me. Boy, they, I've got a lot of people walking, mm -hmm. especially with dogs and that. And then a parkour is, is a great thing to put in, parkour, because... Right, and it, it wouldn't always just be you, you kind of put it in different corners, right, even. Yeah, right, it wouldn't right, all right. be right there, but right, that would right. be an idea from that space. Yeah. So. Jenny, isn't there one at North? Yeah, they, they put when they built the new schools, they put one in. Unfortunately, when they put it at North, they put it in a swampy area, oh. so most of the time it was wet. But it was great. I mean, when we were able to use it, uh, the kids enjoyed it. It was a, it was a it was good. Yeah, yeah, they put it in. Do we are we coming up to a time to request a Community Development Block Grant? No, we actually, the, we already did that. There's two more years left. Two more, okay. Yeah, we get 2022 is, is the facade program that the money will be available in July of 2022, which I've reached out to Kim again. We need to start talking about that. And then the 2023, and I talked to Joe about this, is the is using the funds to, to work on the, the alleys and, and, and use a, a consultant to kind of guide us in some of the things besides just pulling out blacktop. So, so that timing kind of coincides with what we've talked about with the, with the alleyways and projects and stuff like that. So, so the next one's 24? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't there some COVID money that could be used mm -hmm. to do that? Or, I mean, they had talked about, you know, that they're printing money and that the state capital wants us to use it. So right. from a state capital um, yeah, I think that the funding pieces are available. I guess what I'm the direction I'm looking for tonight. I don't want you know. I want to hear people saying, "Wait a minute, we didn't know you guys were going to tear out the fences." I've been playing softball there, Joe. Since yeah, I know. You know I, you're I'm, this tall, right? I'm thinking it's well. You know, I've been so playing ball up there for a, up until. When was the last time? <laughs> oh, the last time was just before COVID, but not like in a in a league, but this uh, was just pick up with the family. Uh -huh. um, and it's disappointing to see it go, but because I was thinking, kind of thinking, you know, the only field we have, ball field we have left in Mount Healthy is my Mount Healthy High School ball, baseball field. Yeah. And I don't think they're gonna let me and my brother on there to fungo some fly balls or, you know, so. Yeah, they will. I think they will. Open. You can, it's open. open. You can, they'll let, you seriously? Yeah, it's yeah. open. Yeah, is, is, is the track open too? Yeah. Yeah. I, I go oh. walking down there. The so they'll let me. They'll let I think me the on tennis the courts are open Klein? too, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. Is, I think the tennis. I did not know that. Yeah. So, is the school ball field up at the old school up mm -hmm. on Adams? Yeah. 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 It's the yeah. So that's available to the public yeah. when they're not. It's really games. nice up there. It is. 
I think we should talk about so this again at the next meeting when we have everybody yeah. here. So if I get inspired. Similar to. Um, well, I hear your nostalgia. I was 1992 Mount Healthy Pup Puck King. Yeah, I know. I, that's gone. I, I, so was my nephew. I don't think it was 92, oh. though. I think it was before. It was, he was right Maybe before you guys him. were battling. Well, yeah, I beat him for that. I remember that. So, if it, you know, if it were being you, I mean, but you think about it, it's a lot of wasted well, time for our maintenance guys. No, 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 I, I agree. My, know, my next thing was if, if I so get inspired, and then I, Debbie and I have had talks about this, and she wants me to stay far, far away from it. But I was thinking an old man's, so, sorry for the term old man, but uh, a senior league up there, um, you know, and I was like, boy, I'd love to see, I would love to see that happening since I'm retired now. But um, well, you know, I don't. Old timers folded. Yeah, they didn't have enough people. Exactly. So, but hey, if if we can work something with the high school, then then we still have a field. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Well, we'll take we'll we'll, we'll re revisit this next week. Really, what I'm looking for now is just because once I tell Greg and he's watching right now, so once I tell him no. to do something, <laughs> you better make he sure does. you want it done because it'll be done. Mm -hmm. So so yeah. um, so I, that that's really all I'm looking for right now. And then, and then we can come up with ideas and you know get the park committee to look at it and do some different things with it. Just make it more useful. Yeah. And, and well, as useful. things change, times change, and yeah. the ebb and flow of society, um, you know, 15, 20 years from now, we may have ball teams all over the place, and we're taking yeah. the grass out, and that's fine. Yeah. It's just yep. yeah. We'll do that then. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I won't. The fencing should have will. been removed a <laughs> long time ago. I mean, yep. you know. Really, you can't really play any kind of regulation game with a with the backstop the way it is. So, um, yeah. No, it, it, and it's crazy how times change. I mean, I, f I forget when when Nick and Eddie were playing ball together, but I was director of boys baseball for one year, and I would not do it to you. I would never do it again. Mm -hmm. um, between assumption and and all, all the teams, we had over 160 games, Mount Healthy YAA, Assumption, girls fast pitch, gr and boys hardball, uh, men's softball. There was, there was over 160 ball games down there. I mean, mm -hmm. so. I, I don't like to push this off, but That's fine. with only four out of seven here, I'd like to I, at least get. Let's keep the meeting moving, Bob. Absolutely. Like <laughs> no, <laughs> I agree. Keep the meeting moving, I, I like yeah. it. Yeah, because we're going to uh, have this discussion yeah. next meeting. So, so Okay, so we'll bring, bring that up under old business, the uh, – um, the, the ballpark, and I've already forgot what the other thing was. The, the report from Karen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Oh, he remembered. See, I caught it, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all I have. Thanks. Okay. Any, any more questions for Mr. Coker? Okay. Um, finance Director, Mr. Bauer. September statements are in your packets. Let me know if you have questions. Okay. Any questions? All right. No ordinances, no resolutions, first readings or second readings. Old business. I would just like to acknowledge um, the contribution um, that was made to my dad's memorial um, fund at uh, the uh, Christian Village of Mount Healthy. Um, and I just want to say that um, I ordered a spray for his uh, casket from Adrian at Touch of Heaven Florist, and it was wonderful. And I might be wrong, but Jim, did you, did she get some vegetables from you? Yes. So it was a vegetable spray because my dad was a gar he loved a garden. So she said, when she said, do you think people will take the vegetables? I said, oh, yeah. She goes, well, I'm going to get the best for Mr. Lowenberg. I'm going to get the organic ones. So it was very much appreciated. I just want to say she did an outstanding job. I mean, even the funeral home, and people were, like, commenting on it. And... Um, and I just want to say, too, that um, even though uh, the Christian Village is not in the city of Mount Healthy, unfortunately, um, they do uh, wonderful, wonderful care work up there. So very appreciative of that place. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Old Business Council. Do we have some things to bring up? <laughs> Under new business. Halloween. Uh, yeah, Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. That's new business. Yeah, I know. That's what I said. Under right. new business. Sorry. <laughs> New business then, Council. When do you want to have Halloween? October 31st. I recommend six to eight. All right. <laughs> Good, we don't have there to update go. the website, so. <laughs> uh, that's everybody else that has to agree to that. Si yeah. Six to 801. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to have much of an opinion. 
after party on Hamilton Avenue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bring your thong. Oh, gosh. Any, anybody, oh, have, we're on TV, yeah. anybody have any objection to six to eight? Is I, I don't. I don't have an objection. I like it. It's taken trick-or-treat at least a little bit in the dark. I make a motion that yep. Mount Healthy celebrate Halloween from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on October 31st. Do I have second. a second? Mr. Redding is seconded. Mr. Parsons made the motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion's carried. Other new business, Council? I uh, just wanted to bring up one thing. Bill talked a little bit about the alleys, but kind of as uh, to bring a couple things in here. Uh, the zoning ordinance, uh, there's still some updates that need to be done, but it's, uh, I was thinking about next steps after the zoning ordinance and, and starting that the, this was just, the zoning ordinance was just one step into further development of the business district. And so uh, that's, that would be on the next step. Uh, and we, may, we may wanna start thinking about that, maybe getting a committee together. So that when we do the alleys and we work with the business district or the business association folks too, we kind of get everything planned, planned out well. So, so. Um, Isn't that part of the grant though? Aren't we going to get consultants in? I thought that was part right, of it. That was part of I mean, yeah. It, you know, I, I guess what I would recommend is, um, you know, we have the healthy hilltops plan, and they and they and they lay out a lot of different steps, and we've right. we've worked on, you know, one of the big ones mm -hmm. was the zoning, which we've done. So yeah, if there's a committee that wants to get together and kind of look at what those next steps are, and if you want to parlay, there's a couple things that are going on. The you know the business facade is the next community development funded project that will s start after July of 2022. So yeah, I mean, getting that there's there's got to be a process and thought process so you know and, 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 and at the same time you could take the he healthy hilltops report and kind of use that as a guide yep. I mean we, we paid for that so yeah if, if you got if yeah. you want to get a committee together it'd be great so obviously not tonight uh, we'll save that one for all seven members too so uh, but something to start thinking about as, as we you know again next steps for making it look like what what we want it to look like so mm -hmm. That's all I had for new Thank business. Thank you, Mr. Redding. Anybody else? Cindy? Yeah, I would like to uh, give you my resignation, and it's effective at midnight tonight. Okay, well, uh, I'm lost for words, Cindy. I'm sorry to hear that. Have you turned it into the Republican Club? Okay. Does something need to be filed with the state of Ohio? No. Okay. The Board of Elections. But were you? Oh, sorry. Board. Of, okay. Okay. Um, we'll miss you. Sorry. Okay. Other new business. Want to make a motion for adjournment, Cindy? Make a motion to adjourn. I All second. Right. Ms. Sheets has made a motion to adjourn, seconded by, um, who is that? Me, yeah. Jenny Moody. By me? <laughs> by me. Jenny Moody. Jenny Moody, <laughs> me. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Meeting is adjourned. That's it, just one. I know, that's it. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Cindy. We had, that was our first day remote, and I couldn't take oh. off. That was why I wanted to. Well, it was meant for the camera. Nope, hey, that was it. Bob,